Hi, this is Rick, and welcome to Excel 2010. This is week two uh, material, and it's going to be broken up into two parts. And so the first part here that I'm going to go over, I've created a basic spreadsheet. Um, it has sales data for several months for several salespeople. We're going to insert a table. We're going to do some filtering. Um, we're going to put a basic formula in to total out the sales volumes, and maybe one other formula here, and then... Um, we will add a row to an existing table just to show you how that's done. So with that said, um, what I've done here is I've got a, in column A, I've got a list of salespeople. Column B, I have their region that they belong to, and then all the sales data for January through November. So the first thing that we want to do is let's assume that now we have um, data to put in for December. Uh, one thing you can do that I wanted to share with you is you can do what's called auto um, uh, populate or auto fill in um, what you can do here like if there's a sequence of numbers months or anything of that nature you can have Excel automatically fill it in obviously this isn't such a big thing to fill in one um, column here but let me delete some of these I'll put in January through March over here and let's assume I want to just instead of typing them all out I can just highlight um, columns um, or uh, row from C1 through E1 here can highlight January through March and how I do that I single click here on January I hold down the left mouse button and I drag to when I get to March and now I let go of the mouse button and now if I want to extend that that sequence I move my cursor with my mouse to the point where I get across and then I click and hold the left mouse button and just drag it over to we get to December which is column N and I let go and we, that auto fills in so to keep things simple here, um, uh, I'll go ahead and make up some numbers here. So 7,800, um, and then I could just let, let make things quick here. I'm going to go ahead and copy from August data from row 4 down. How I do that is I single click here in J4, and then I hold down my mouse button and I drag it down to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and either I can right click and say copy or I can go ahead and hit the control C button um, and what that will do so that I hit control then C that's the same thing as copy it's a shortcut key then I click over here on column N 4 and I want to copy this range of numbers over to here I can either right click and choose paste and you see there's lots of different paste options. We'll talk about those later, but we'll choose the default paste. Another thing I could do, I'm going to go ahead and back out of that. I could just click here again, and I could do Control V for paste, which is a shortcut. All right. So now I've got that data. Now I'm going to hit Escape, and you'll see this will stop flashing because now it's active. I could paste that anywhere right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click up here. I'm going to go ahead and hit Escape, and I'm going to make a totals column. And so what I want to do here is I want to do total sales I'm gonna hit return and now I want to add up all the numbers for each salesperson from January through uh, December how I do that is I create a formula here to sum all those numbers up so I can do that a couple different ways one is I can type in equals all formulas in Excel start with the equal sign by the way and I can type sum and I hit tab and it will automatically give me the shell for the formula or the template for the formula and then I can click over here and uh, on the first cell hold down the left mouse button and drag it all the way through December and let go and then now you see the formula is C2 through N2 which are the cells I want to total and then I close the parenthesis and I hit return and there it is so it tallies it up for me so now um, there's another way to do it I can go over here to the formulas tab and there's all these options for formulas and you'll see if you go under financial for example there's lots of drop down options here but they have auto sum right here which is a very popular one so what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and click auto sum and it does what, just what I did there um, so you can see it auto determined that that was the range I wanted to do and I can just hit return so now rather than doing that for every cell here just like we filled in a sequence of months I can go ahead and copy that down how I can do that is I can just highlight the cell and now when the cur let go of the mouse when the cursor turns to um, 
across here I can click the left mouse button hold it and drag it down to the very last salesperson here now I've got total sales um, for each salesperson the formula is displayed up here um, you'll notice as I click in down each row they auto adjust so there might be a scenario where you want to have that always not auto adjust for you so a good example would be let's assume that I put a total down here and I came down here and now I wanted to do an auto sum of all of the sales and I hit I hit that and now I've got a total of 7.7 um, .7 million roughly so now I go over here and now I want to say um, percentage of total sales and now I could have a formula that says equals in this case Mike's sales total sales divided by the total sales for everybody so now you can see Mike has about 9.5 percent of the say of all sales but now if I copy this one down you see what will happen it doesn't work because I click this and now this stayed this moved to 014 and it should be 013 you get the idea it moved to 015 so I'm going to delete those and now what I want to do I want to take this formula and I want 013 to remain constant so I can do that a couple different ways um, or I can the way to do it is you put in a dollar symbol which holds it as a constant value like that and that would do it right and I can copy that down I'll show you an example I'll just copy a few rows and now you can see what happens there um, it holds it as a constant so I can delete that there's a little quicker and easier way to do that I'm going to go change that back to the default and get rid of the dollar signs I can highlight my 013 and I can just hit the F4 key and that'll automatically put the dollar sign in there. There may be some scenarios where you're not going to do that and the reason why you might not do that is because let's assume that you want the column to change but the row to not change so you could do you could do that um, and only have the dollar sign in front of the row value so it's 100% up to you know there's case by case basis but I'm going to go ahead and copy this down and then um, the next thing I want to do is I want to do a insert a table here and what I want to do is I'm going to go to I'm going to highlight a cell over here it's anywhere inside the table I'm going to do insert and I'm going to say table and automatically selected the main table which which is fine for this purpose so I'm going to go ahead and click OK and you see what it did so if you've got a large amount of data and you want to have a quick and easy way of, of filtering on it this is a good way to do it you insert a table and now you'll notice um, you have a drop down up here I can click this and I can just I can hit the select all button and that basically unselects them all and I can go and look at David's and Bob's sales data all right and it'll show it over here I can uncheck that I can go back to say select all and that'll list them all but now let's say I want to go look at all the South Regions data. I can go over here and I can look at the South Regions data. Alright, so um, it gives you an easy way of filtering. You can also do um, show me the South Regions data and show me um, you know some other characteristic, right? Um, you know, just show me Anita's. Right, so you can have a, a whole variety of, um, you can have these checked and keep in mind it's going to Sometimes if you if you don't see what you're expecting to see, go back and check your drop downs here and make sure you you don't have something um, selected unselected that you don't want to unselect. And let's see what else I want to do. Um, let me go ahead and I'm going to delete this off of here right now. The totals and that's going to break that. I'm going to delete that. And I am going to um, I'm going to add a new salesperson here. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll add a new salesperson. We'll, we'll name him Jim. And then we'll, now let's see, we'll put him in the north region. And then we'll go ahead and 
I'll just auto populate this I think actually what I'll do I'm gonna do this 4300 I'm gonna go in increments of $300 and show you what that'll do any sequence of events that is reproducible will do so I'm gonna go ahead and do drag this over and it should increase by $300 every time and you can see that it does all right so now um, what you'll notice is I've, I've successfully added um, Jim to that list of the table and I can just choose Jim if I want to and there's his um, there's his data so I'm going to unselect that and then finally what I want to show you on this tutorial is I'm going to show you sometimes you might put in a table and then you might not want the table any longer for some reason um, because it's some editing that you're going to do so you can go to you can right click um, anywhere in the table and or sorry click anywhere in the table and then right click and choose table and say convert to range and it will ask you if you want to convert the table to a normal range and you say yes and there you notice it still kept the formatting here by the way but you'll notice there's no drop down table for filtering that's what I want to share with you and then in part two um, we're going to talk about some shortcuts and some save options thanks for joining